Hello. 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 Hi there. Hello and welcome to the RadioTimes.com Doctor Who podcast. My name's Hugh Fullerton and this week I am joined by Helen Daly. Hello. Uh, and we are here to chat all about Ascension of the Cybermen, which is the penultimate episode of Doctor Who Series 12, leading us into the grand finale, uh, but also pretty intense episode in its own right, right? Yeah, I mean, kind of where do we even start with this? I was kind of thinking about an appropriate place to start, but all of it was just excellent and all of it was really tense and dramatic and what you want from the first part of a Doctor Who finale, right? Definitely. I mean, I was just filled with this sort of sense of dread the whole way through. I mean, and I'm not sure whether that was justified, uh, but I think maybe it was something to do with the music or just, you know, I just felt like something terrible was going to happen. And then nothing terrible well, quite. Did. Some mm. Some bad things happened, but not quite. Uh, which, yeah, basically the story picks up where we left off uh, at the end of episode eight, the haunting of Villa Diodati uh, with the lone Cyberman Ashant zips back to uh, the end of one of the Cyber Wars. Uh, Doctor Who fans can sort of inform me where it fits into the timeline. There are lots of Cyber Wars mentioned in the series past. And yeah, basically we have the Doctor and friends kind of trying to help the last humans escape the Cybermen, the Cybermen trying to rebuild the army and kind of managing to do that quite easily. Uh, And also we kind of keep cutting away to this odd little... uh, storyline where there's an Irish police officer who can't die and then who is tortured and has his memories wiped at the end which is very strange yeah uh, it was and kind we're of like an sure episode of Grantchester or something yeah it was like it was yeah, really a bit like heartbeat or but to be honest the bit where he falls off the cliff I was like Chris Chibnall's done Broadchurch again uh, <laughs> yeah was that the same cliff <laughs> I probably not but you, you know you never know you never know he does live I think he does live around there so maybe you know pop down to the beach for a quick filming sesh uh, but yeah and then at the end of the episode um, the Doctor and co find I can't remember what they called it the sort of portal was it called um the boundary the boundary the zero we've had the rifts we've had the tear we've had the cracks in space this is the boundary no one can say portal in doctor who it's not allowed <laughs> uh, but yeah this is basically a magic boundary that takes you anywhere in time and space so obviously the survivors of the cybermen are quite keen to sort of get out of dodge and then the doctor sees in that Gallifrey. How's Gallifrey there? And then the master's back. <gasps> Sasha Dewan, uh back playing the master. And he says, everything's about to change. Be afraid, doctor. And all that stuff. So yeah, there's quite a lot. Quite a lot going on. Um, but yeah, like, like you said, I feel like this is, this is a, I enjoyed this episode a lot. I feel like it's a lot of setup. Mm. So like... W- as a story in its own right, I was kind of like, you know, some for, for, sometimes the first of a two-parter kind of stands alone as like, you can see the whole shape of it, right? Whereas this one was very much, I think, setting up the finale. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of in for it because I think, as you say, you know, there's two sides to it. It's either a, a perfect episode, you know, thinking back to something like Human Nature, which kind mm. of just stood alone. Um, but then, you know... This actually sets up quite a lot. It was quite dramatic, quite tense. You had some great Cybermen scenes, which are always fun to look yeah. at. Um, and I, I thought, um, yeah, I'm kind of really intrigued to see where they're going to go from there because it seems like ultimate peril. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to cover as well because we know that there's the whole Cyberman storyline. We see in the next time trailer that they're, you know, make course for Gallifrey or whatever it is. You know, the Master's back. Presumably, we've heard from Chris Chibnall. We're going to get some answers about the Timeless Child. Uh, the mystery that's kind of been ongoing and also about the Joe Martin Doctor. He says that we'll find out about that. We have one episode left. It's an extended episode, 65 minutes versus the usual 50. But still, that's a lot to pack in. 15 minutes doesn't feel enough. Yeah, they'll just, do, <laughs> they'll just, they'll just kill, they'll be, they'll be first half hour in Ireland, seeing him, you know, <laughs> stop some more shoplifters, things like that. And he'll be like, actually, this I wasn't know. relevant. He's had his memory wiped now. He doesn't have a clue what's that's going That's true. On. Yeah, maybe he won't be a guard this time. Maybe, I don't really know if he's being reset or not. Yeah, I mean, it's very odd, that whole subplot, actually. I mean, I was going to talk about that in a minute, but maybe we should just talk about it now. Like, I kind of thought this is something to do with the Cybermen. This is maybe going to be the lone Cyberman. I mean, it didn't look like him at all. I mean, when it was a baby, I thought, oh, maybe this will be him. <laughs> yeah, um, could have been. Could have been. And then, you know, he gets older, and obviously he's Irish. And bizarrely, I think the lone Cyberman actor is Irish. He's called Patrick O'Kane, but he doesn't play it as Irish. So, <laughs> and, and also, he's not the same actor as played yeah. uh, Brendan in these flashbacks. And yeah, it seems like it's just a kind of ordinary story. And up until that point where he gets shot and falls off a cliff and he doesn't die and he resurrects, kind of in John Barrowman-esque Captain Jack fashion. So I was like, is there a connection there? But I don't think there would be. And then also then at the end, he's about to retire from his job as a guard and his dad's there and the sergeant who hired him to the police is there, but they haven't aged. And they take him away, do this electrocution thing where he's losing his memories. And I just have no idea how any of this relates. Like, I was really like, oh, there's going to be a big killer moment. You're like, oh, my God, this is how it works. And I've kind of landed on four things, 
which is that we talked. <laughs> right. Well, we talked about the the things that the finale has to resolve. Right? We talked about you know the Cybermen stuff, Timeless Child stuff, New Doctor stuff, and um, also you know maybe setting up the next series. Which I didn't mention. So maybe it's a Cyberman thing. Maybe it's a simulation like the Matrix. This is what's going through a Cyberman's head. Don't know why it would be like this. Also, I feel like that would be kind of anticlimactic. So maybe not. This is a Timeless Child thing. Is this guy the timeless child? We see him as a baby. He sort of doesn't die. He sort of resets, or his memory resets. Anyway, people around him don't die. Sort of timeless? <laughs> kind, of, yes. kind of relates. <laughs> is it a Joe Martin Doctor thing? Is this another Time Lord in, you know, who's been, like in, you mentioned human nature, like in that where he's, you know, he's been turned human and doesn't remember anything. Could these two people who don't age be his, like, protectors, like Lee was to Ruth in episode five? Uh, could... I don't really know why he'd have his memory reset at the end. And I don't, maybe that clock he got was his chameleon arch. Uh, you know, he got a clock at the end of yeah, his job yeah, yeah. and they've hidden those things in clocks before. So maybe that's it. I mean, I don't really, it isn't quite, it's not quite the same. I don't really understand why he wouldn't die falling off a cliff. And maybe that's a protection thing. I just instantly thought it was Jack. I was yeah. like, <gasps> right, Jack's in Ireland now, fine. Yeah, I was like, I was like, could a chameleon arch work on Jack? Could Jack like change? And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't think so. And then also there's the possibility it doesn't really relate to anything we've said. It could be something completely new. And also Chris Chibnall said, uh, the head writer said, in the last couple of episodes, they're going to be looking ahead to what could be in series mm. 13, which has been confirmed. So maybe you know, this is going to carry on being a sort of subplot and then it's going to reveal this new threat that we'll find next year. I kind of doubt that because I feel like it's a lot of time to invest in something that we're not going to see for 18 months or whatever. But who knows? Could be. I couldn't help but think that it has to be linked to the Joe Martin Doctor. It must be. Just because, you know, they, they made such a big hoo-ha about bringing her in. No pun intended. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, bringing her in, you know, introducing this whole extra canon of Doctors that existed before William Hartnell. So I think it would kind of be foolish for them not to readdress that in the same season since they've already set it up so well. Yeah, I think Chris Chibnall said in an interview, we'll get some answers. Like, we, mm. we don't know if she'll appear. I, I mean, it seems... Seems pretty obvious that she'll appear. Yeah. Uh, but we don't know that for sure. Uh, technically, they could solve it in a different way. We've seen these flashbacks of the Doctor looking at someone who could be the Timeless Child, could be the Ruth Doctor. It's all a bit unclear. Part of me wondered if this person trapped in a comedian circuit could be a regeneration of that Doctor or the Doctor before yeah. the Ruth Doctor. who, And then we'll sort of see that old Irish man <laughs> turn into Ruth. But I don't know. That feels a bit weird. I don't know if that's a bit laboured it could be a version of the master that was before this sasha mm. dewan master you know maybe he's trapped and they're trying to teach him to do better you know they've put him in this sort of rural town and you know given him this job where he's supposed to help people and maybe the idea is that he just sort of gets better and then they sort of reset him and it carries on don't know does that make sense would that be would be a much point to that do we really yeah. need the backstory for what the I master's think been we up do. to i think i think it's always interesting to hear what the master's been doing because mm. he's always or she's always such a colourful character that I personally always want to know more about the motivations behind the master. Mm. You know, Sasha Joanne's now taking over the role and we don't really know what this master wants. Hopefully yeah. that's going to come clean. I'm assuming it will. We just know that he's back and he's pretty bad again. Yeah, there's not really an answer for why, he, you know, this whole Michelle Gomez Missy storyline's gone undone. I mean, I, I, I personally don't think they're ever going to solve that because I think most people know the master is bad and they're just going to be like, ah, I just changed. <laughs> just take it <laughs> as a given. It, they'll leave it for big finish and uh, <laughs> all the fan fiction writers. But, um, well, it does look like we're going to see a bit more uh, of what he wants in the next thing. We sort of see, you know, him saying, look upon my works, Doctor in Despair, a bit of <laughs> Ozymandias. Per Percy Shelley, actually, that's, that's ironic. Oh. Percy Shelley was in the last episode. And he's is Percy Shelley the master? twist <laughs> uh and and also you know he's saying everything i told you was a lie now you're going to find out the truth and that was about the timeless child so presumably the doctor's going to get some memories back or something yeah maybe when he said this is going to hurt in the trailer he meant getting your memories back is going to hurt who knows i mean it's hard to know what his motives are here is he just messing with her he sort of seemed in his last appearance to be angry about the whole timeless child mystery himself like it seemed to affect him in some way the title of the next episode is the timeless children there's more than one, so maybe it's the Master Amber Doctor. Who knows? Unless it's kind of looking back again, you know, at the Ruth Doctor. Maybe it's kind of that previous William Hartnell incarnations. They're all the children. You mean that, that cycle that is... Yeah. Well, we don't know for sure that it is a pre-William Hartnell Doctor. I mean, we sort of assume. Yeah. I mean, I, you have it, to. it's almost definitely going to be that. <laughs> unless, someone, unless he's really keen on um, the whole uh, Series 7B, Patrick Troughton... 
John Pertwee thing, which we've written about on radioscience.com if you're interested, or the Morbius <laughs> doctors. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it seems like it, uh, yeah. that's kind of a thing. So you mean like maybe that entire cycle is like the timeless children because yeah, they, perhaps. they we don't know them anymore. And then we're going to get that kind of flashback to the 50th anniversary where you know all the doctors are like Gareth yeah. Rose Rizzo and like that but kind that of situation but that was like 40 of them <laughs> yeah and it's just all of these like previous incarnations of the doctor and we're That's like fun. what do we do now with the canon <laughs> yeah I mean just big finish start printing their own money but like oh we just got endless doctors <laughs> we do whatever we want um Props to Big Finish, by the way. Just a lot of love to Big Finish. No, <laughs> no, no shade, no shade. Uh, so, yeah, um, we should probably talk for a couple of stray thoughts as well. I mean, we've talked a lot about the Doctors. and Obviously, the Cybermen are back in this. I love seeing these different versions of the Cybermen. Uh, you know, obviously, a Shad, the lone Cyberman, uh, who I think is a really cool villain. Yeah. Um, I think it's sort of bizarre because if you just brought him in as this angry cyborg, you'd be like, you're boring. With the context of the Cybermen, he's more interesting because the Cybermen have always been faceless, well, for the most part, and, you know, emotionless. And I think that's kind of one of their strengths, but also one of their weaknesses because... Same with the Daleks, you don't really have a person to focus on. You don't really have a mastermind, do you? Mm. I mean, the Daleks have Davros. I guess maybe a Shad is kind of the Cyberman equivalent. Yeah, I mean, he makes the Cybermen look good. Yeah. <laughs> He's so evil. And I quite like that because it is an interesting dynamic to hear like the voice, see the face and actually see the emotions, which is ironic. It's totally. Like an angry Cyberman is mm. just a cool idea. Like it's just not something we've seen before. It shouldn't see. It shouldn't be seen. You know, they no. shouldn't even have that anger within them. They should just be kind of robots. That's yeah. kind of the point of them. And I think that's the thing that this helps us remember is that they're not robots. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they, there are people in there and sometimes it's easy to forget that. Um, like I also really like that he was accompanied by you know, emotionless Cybermen, the two cyber Cybermen, who are apparently the only two left yeah. apart from him, very battered. And I love how that design's come back because it sort of reminds me of, you remember when the series came back in 2005, they had the gold Daleks and then they rebooted the Daleks with the colourful the Daleks. The pots. Yeah, and then they kind of just sort of shuffled them off stage left because <laughs> no one liked them and the gold ones came back. It kind of feels like that with the Cybermen in that in 2013, they rebooted them like, oh yeah, here's the new Cyberman design. And they did use it a few times mm. afterwards. But all of the Cyberman iconography in this more or less is those cyber cybermen like the head at the beginning the sort of the little flying heads and stuff there's that kind of you know I, I don't, i'm gesturing to helen it's not very good radio but um you <laughs> I know, know exactly what he's on about the sort of pointy <laughs> pointy headed ones and I, I find it quite funny that that's clearly just a better design so we slip back to it although obviously we then do get this new design of cybermen which are kind of a cross uh, between the 2013 era nightmare and silver cybermen and kind of classic Cybermen with these big, I mean, I'm wearing earphones now. They've got these big <laughs> earphone things. They're the called like, project ones. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and they've got like, they're called like Warrior Cybermen or something like that. Um, warrior class. And there's, you know, about a million of them or however mm. many on this ship that they've decided to sort of fly to uh, the boundary and Koshamas and that lot just to kind of little welcome party. <laughs> lots yeah. of Cybermen. Hey, it's my head. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> But yeah, so I liked seeing all these different designs sort of in the same area. I hope that can, carries on. You know, it would be cool to see some, cool to see some classic ones. I mean, maybe they just wouldn't really stand up though, uh, it, you know, in the modern light of day. Uh, in the way that the classic Daleks kind of do because they're more of a prop than a costume. Yeah, it would kind of be cooler if the lone Cyberman was a little bit more classic. Yeah. Just because he's so stand out anyway. It's weird actually because he isn't, when I first saw him, I thought he was a version of the, you know, 2013 recent yeah. Cybermen who's a bit battered. But someone pointed out online, he's actually completely different. Like, he's got a completely different face shape anyway. Like, he's separate again. He's and new. then Yeah, so I'm sort of like, that's quite a good design. <laughs> like, you could just do normal ones who aren't broken, who look like that. And that would be quite cool. But, yeah. hey-ho. Um, oh, yeah, I also wanted to say um, there's that bit at the beginning where you have that floating Cyberman head in space and the voiceover. I mean, it just turns in the eye and then the eye Super opens cool. the credits and it goes in. I love that. I really <laughs> wish the series would do more of that because yeah. I feel like it used to play around with credits and stuff a bit more. But we've talked a lot about uh, cold opens and stuff on radiotimes.com and whether Doctor Who should or shouldn't have them. This series has had a few more than the last series, but that was 100% what, what a good cold open does mm. for me like it got me excited and it was just cool and it was like visually interesting mm. and it kind of harked back a little bit to Praxis earlier in the season when we saw we heard Jodie Whittaker's doctor mm. giving that little narration about humanity whatever and then in this one we have the lone cyberman giving point. his kind of take on things and I thought oh that's quite a nice take and yeah. then when you go in to the the titles through the eye it's like okay well this is a cyberman episode then today Definitely. i mean it's quite impressive really how well they've centered it as like the cybermen are back considering they only turned up you know last week mm. you know ashad is a new villain he hasn't been teased throughout the series like the master was in the first couple of episodes came back ruth was we didn't hear anything of the cybermen till five when we heard a warning and then you know now they're the big thing and i think it's actually a credit to the writing especially in episode eight that 
they do feel like pretty established. Ashad, you know, the lone Cyberman, feels established. Incidentally, thank you for giving him a name. It makes it a lot easier to talk about him without just saying the lone Cyberman, which doesn't really make sense. When he's, <laughs> King got a, Cyberman. Yeah, big boss Cyberman, um, <laughs> the ultimate cyber controller. I mean, a couple of low, sort of lone questions, actually. I mean, I don't really understand what he's doing to the other Cybermen. No, I was a little bit confused about that because... You know, they'd set they'd set it up quite well that this was a Cyberman army that had those classic, like, Age of Steel shots where they're they all, all emerging. All the doors open. Yeah, like, really, really <laughs> cool. But then he started attacking them, and it has to be something special, you know, just like um, they said in the show, to make a Cyberman scream. Yeah. What is he actually doing? Is he doing something with the, the nerves and the emotions in them? Well, I was wondering that because, you know, the emotion thing is working for him. Yeah. So maybe he's like... I want to give that to people. But then I'm sort of like, why bother being a Cyberman at that stage? But that's exactly how, like, the Age of Steel was all wrapped up. They gave them back the emotions and yeah. they just exploded. I feel like that was a little callback to that at the beginning of the episode as well. They had they had that, the emotional inhibitor thing was going to, like, set all the Cybermen off. And then that all got blown up anyway, so yeah. it was pointless. Um, no, I know what you mean. I was wondering if it was something to do with the Siberium, you know, the sort of mm. AI in the magic metal thing he got in episode eight, because that... At the end, the Cybermen were all there. Like, he couldn't have, like, injected absolutely all of them, but maybe he injected one of them and it kind of, like... Give them the plan, pass the plan on. Yeah, exactly, like, through the sort of hive yeah. mind. Because I think they said hail the Siberium at one point, uh, the, the warrior Cybermen, yeah. unless I'm wrong. So please write in and tell me if I'm wrong. Just in general, you know, I, I always enjoy reading it. Um, but, yeah, um, I think, like, it maybe has something to do with that. But, yeah, I don't know what he's doing with that because I thought, oh, he's got his army, great, job done. And then he's like, no, nah, I'm going to mess with them now. <laughs> yeah. gonna Going to, you know... What's the word I'm looking for? They're not right. <laughs> yeah, going to mod them. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I found actually interesting with the Siberium is that we still don't know how it got back to the haunting of Villa Diodati. No, I mean, in episode five, Jack says, I didn't realise this at the time when we were doing yeah. the review of episode eight, Jack says the Alliance sent something back through time to stop them. I don't really understand how it would, I guess maybe stealing it stops them and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I think... I've done a bit of research, and I'm sorry for any classic fans who are, like, hating my guts for not knowing the ins and outs of it very well. But basically, um, during the c cyber wars past, it's been mentioned that there was an alliance of different races and people from around the galaxy who, like, joined together to fight back against the Cybermen. And I think Jack said the alliance sent this thing back in time. So I think that's the... So are we theoretically going to see the alliance again? Well, maybe. I mean, maybe this. Maybe they sent it back before all this. Because I think in this episode, it's like there's barely anyone left, right? Yeah. There's a few humans, not many. Um, and it's sort of, I guess maybe they sent it back before all that, like before the final battles so of the Cybermen kind of were a bit stuck and didn't couldn't quite fight properly and then the humans killed them. But like a few Cybermen remained and sort of gradually picked off what was left of the humans. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? I it's, guess it's a tricky we'll one because it kind of seems like the odds are really genuinely against the Doctor and her team. Yeah, I, I reckon they might pull it off. You know, um, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> they might just might just squeeze that one out. Uh, but yeah, no, I I'm interested to see what happens. I mean, like I said, it's just a lot to resolve. Like, I my one worry is there's going to be too much to resolve, mm. as well as like we see the master in this episode. He's introduced, but we don't see the Ruth Doctor. Like, she's not in there, so she's going to have to be reintroduced, and presumably show that whole thing. And they're going to have to do the Cyberman story. And you know, there's all the characters who we met in part one. There's the wizard guy, Koshamas. There's you know. Who I loved, by the he way. He was very cool. Ian McElhinney. Um, uh, you know, there's the whole subplot, the Ian Ireland. <laughs> can't believe I keep saying that. The Irish subplot of Doctor Who. And um, how is it all linked? How is the yeah. master linked to the Cyberman who's linked to... Gallifrey, Gallifrey and this thing in Ireland. Yeah. yeah, And Brendan. <laughs> yeah, what's going on with Brendan? Who is uh, Brendan? <laughs> yeah, who is Brendan? Uh, so there's a lot to find out. Um, luckily, we don't have long to find out. We don't have long to wait. Uh, it was just a week. Um, and yeah, we'll be back to chat all about the Timeless Children as and when it comes. Uh, prior to that, if you want to hear more about our thoughts about this episode, we've got loads of content on RadioTimes.com, chatting about the return of the Master and Brendan, <laughs> whoever Brendan is. Uh, and also uh, in print, if you're a fan of print, uh, this week's Radio Times is a special preview issue for the finale. Uh, we've got interviews with Jodie Whittaker, Mandip Gill, Tosin Cole, Bradley Walsh, and the Master himself, Sasha Dewan. Uh, so you can check that out for some inside bits and bobs about the making of the series. And yeah, but, you know, after all that, we're just kind of guessing like you. We're not sure what's going to happen, but we'll find out. And then we'll be back with our uh, episode 10 review. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for listening. I've been Hugh. I've been Helen. And goodbye. Bye. Bye.